This is video number two in the Echobee thermostat unboxing. Check out the first video if you didn't get a chance to look at that yet. Uh, today we're going to focus on the Echobee remote sensor. This requires the Echobee 3 or 4 thermostat, not the 3 light. Um, the remote sensor is going to connect to the thermostat directly and it's going to use the thermostat like a bridge device. So think, think of this like your Philips Hue bridge or your Lutron bridge. It will connect through the thermostat and get exposed to HomeKit. So there's really nothing to do other than have your uh, thermostat already HomeKit enabled. We're going to get a temp sensor and a motion sensor exposed out to HomeKit. So let's take a look at uh, setting that up. So when we're looking at the Echobee room sensor here, this acts as a remote sensor. So this is a remote device. It's battery operated and it uh, should be battery operated for a while. It's got a um, little pull tab here. So we're going to have to pull that out to let the battery contact. And we've also got this cute little stand here. So if you want, you can uh, make it stand basically wherever you want. So we'll go through the instructions here, pull the plastic tab. Of course, we know that. Continue to finish your sensor setup. So we're going to do this over by the um, Echobee thermostat. We can either mount it directly on the wall or we can mount it on the stand, which is kind of cool. We do have options here. What's also nice is that not only do we have kind of these installation instructions, but we've got placement instructions Depending on where you put it, if you put this in the corner of a room or in an area where you don't have very good airflow, you may get some strange readings, which I have seen in the past. So it's good that they're actually telling us that in advance. So for the actual pairing of the device, it's this is really simple. You literally just bring this over here and you pull the battery, the, that, that little tab out, and it says, whoa, look at that. I've discovered a sensor. Would you like to pair now? Yes, let's pair this. Where? What do I want to call this? Um, for right now, let's see, let's call this, I was going to go into my office for testing. So let's call this office. Click on the next button. And the sensor is active during the selected comfort settings. So do I want this to be active and part of my settings during my away or my sleep? No, nobody sleeps in the office. So I really only want this feeding into the settings when I am home. So that's good. That was it. That was the whole setup process. So before we head over to the home app, let's take a look at the Echobee app and make sure that our remote sensor has indeed been, uh, been discovered and, and connected. So here we are on the iPad version of the app and we can go over into our sensors and look at that. We have a sensor. We have the office sensor here and it is indeed set only um, active during the selected comfort setting, so only with home. And that's exactly what we expected to see. So nothing, uh, no surprises here. So let's go over to the home app now. So like most bridge devices, it looks like what the Echobee has done is it's actually put, um, it's put the sensor, remote sensor, in the same room, the same home kit room as, um, as the bridge device itself. So this is kind of normal. So instead of having us in the office like like we wanted it to be, it's actually put this into the hallway, which is where the thermostat is located. So if you're searching around, that's that's where you're going to go look for it. And so now what we're going to do is we're just going to move that over. It knows that those two are the same device. And so now we can go over into the office and we should see our two Echo B devices over there. So here we are and we can see that we've got the um, Echo B My Office was triggered. So I'm going to change the name, not just of the motion sensor, but I want to change this on the temperature sensor as well, because I've got a few temperature sensors in my office. Um, definitely you wouldn't have this in a normal environment. So we're going to change this to temperature sensor. Status is active. Yes. Good. That's it. We're done. So now I've got a temperature sensor and a motion sensor. I can, um, for instance, take out my Elgato Eve motion sensor that I'm using in my office and put that somewhere else. So far, my testing has been that the the Echobee isn't isn't as responsive as I would like it to be. This is definitely not something I would use in a hallway where you want the lights to come on quickly as you pass through it. It's probably going to be fine in my office because I come in and I I sit down and I spend time in here, so I can easily afford to wait two or three seconds, four seconds for the motion detection to come on and for the lights to then come on. So that's not going to be a problem. Um, but definitely, like with most things, you kind of need to understand what you're going to be looking at here. 
the, the length of time it takes to trigger is something I do have a bit of a concern with. The other thing that I've seen is that the um, Echo B will stay in the motion triggered state for a long time, um, more than half an hour. So I also need to figure out exactly what's going on there. I have asked Echo B directly and they tell me that should be um, going to a reset status to, to non-active in about five minutes, which is not what I'm seeing. So I definitely want to dig a little more into that and, and do some more testing and let you guys know how that goes. If this video has been useful for you, please hit the like button. That does really help. Um, definitely subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to learn more about just making your home a little bit smarter with Apple HomeKit, please, please check the details in the link below. There is a coupon code for my Udemy class. Would really appreciate your support. Thanks and see you soon.